This story begins in the prison of the Silver Dragon Dungeon which was guarded by two dragon guards. The Silver Dragon Queen named Rosways arrived and gave the order to the guards to leave first as she wanted to speak with him alone. In this prison, the great dragon slaying hero was chained. She asked him how it felt to be a prisoner of the dragon clan, to which he replied that he wanted to die. She began to smile upon seeing that he wanted her to give him a quick death. She started touching his chin. For her this was not easy given that he was a handsome and determined man. Using her sharp nail, she made a small cut on his face, thinking that adding a few more small scratches would make it perfect. He turned his head away so she would stop humiliating him. She could kill him or cut him into pieces if she wanted. The only thing he wished for was that she acted faster. Despite the fact that he was very powerful, he had been deceived by a villain and now was in a miserable state. The Dragon Queen began to lick the blood and suggested to him joining the Silver Dragon Clan. But he mocked her by asking if she was worthy. The Dragon Queen became enraged and gave him a strong tail whip, sending his body flying and making it crash against the wall. She placed her foot on his chest, and she couldn't believe that a prisoner dared to be rude to her. The great dragon slaying hero's name was Leon Cosmode. Being in such a state as this, he could no longer keep believing that he was the great hero of humanity who was praised by thousands of people nor could he continue dreaming of annihilating the dragon clan and leaving behind a good reputation for future generations. The dragon queen mocked him, telling him to wake up since he was going to die here. She began to stomp harder on his chest. Maybe he could have had the chance to allow his descendants to enjoy wealth and glory with him. But unfortunately, he didn't have a successor, so he wasn't going to have a day like that. Leon asked her not to underestimate humans. Using her tail, she grabbed Leon by the neck, thinking that he was a very stubborn guy. She started strangling him and asked if he was ready to beg for mercy. But at that moment, Leon revealed to her that she had made two mistakes from the beginning. First, she should not have been alone with the most powerful dragon slayer, and second, she should never have tasted his blood. Leon used a technique called Blood Curse, causing the Dragon Queen to stop strangling him. She began to back away and started feeling horny. She lost control over her body and fell to her knees on the ground. Leon approached her and decided to make her live in pain brought by the soul all her life. She increasingly began to get hornier, and without hesitating for a second, she pounced on Leon, throwing him to the ground and leaving him somewhat confused, unable to understand what was happening. The Dragon Queen began to get aroused due to the situation and she gave Leon a kiss, making him blush. They started clapping for an hour and then the blood curse stopped having effect, causing the Dragon Queen to regain control over her body. Quickly she moved away, asking Leon what he had done to her, to which he explained that blood curse was a forbidden technique that could only be used once in a lifetime. If she tasted his blood, it would create a soul connection between them, and once he died, the curse would plunge her into eternal pain. The Dragon Queen thought he was talking nonsense since if this was a spell that took effect after death, then what had just happened made no sense. The reality was that this had been an accident. He had thought the pain caused by his death was the manifestation of everything. But this spell had the side effect of making her horny. The Dragon Queen began to blush. As far as Leon knew, dragons followed the rule of monogamy. After his death, the Great Silver Dragon Queen would not only be unable to find a new mate but also incapable of having offspring and even unable to explain to the dragon clan why all this had happened. He was somewhat surprised because the effect of this forbidden spell had far exceeded his expectations. She had said that Leon was not going to have a successor, and now she wasn't going to have a successor either. She launched into the attack, and Leon told her that she didn't have to do this by herself since he was going to die soon anyway. As Lone's eyes were closing, he asked the Dragon Queen to live with hatred towards him and pain throughout her life. This was his curse for her as a human being. The Dragon Queen held back and decided not to kill Leon, and not long after, he lost his life. He was just a human being and was taking revenge on her in such a despicable way. She wasn't going to let this be so easy for him. She used her power making the mark of the Silver Dragon appear on Leon's chest. Leon Cosmode was once a legendary Dragon Slayer hero. When he was five years old, he killed his neighbor's vicious dog with his own hands. He was stopped by a passing expert Dragon Slayer and accepted as his apprentice. At the age of 10, he entered the Imperial Dragon Slayer Academy for further studies, and four years later he graduated graduated at the youngest age and with the highest evaluation in history. At 15 years old, he stepped onto the battlefield against dragons, killed countless dragons, recaptured territory and made numerous military achievements for the Empire. Leon was known as the strongest dragon slayer hero and the only hope to lead the Empire to victory and end the war. This until he became a slave of the Dragon Clan. Two years had passed since Leon had been captured. 
He woke up and started screaming, then put his hand on his chest and calmed down a bit. He began to look around wondering where he was. At that moment, a little girl opened the door of the room, and upon seeing how cute she was, Leon was shocked. Little by little he began to understand everything. He got out of bed and thought that the girl was an angel. He thought that he was in heaven since he had made a very great contribution to humanity. But to his surprise the girl was not an angel. He asked the girl what her name was and she replied that her name was Muin. He started to feel happy, however, it was strange that the color of the girl's hair was black and white. Muin mentioned that her mother said her name meant the moon leaving Leon somewhat confused, as he did not know if angels also had mothers. Leon also introduced himself, and the girl got excited and said that Leon meant lion. He was somewhat surprised and asked her who had told her this, to which she replied that it was what her mother had told her. Filled with confusion, Leon asked her what her mother's name was, to which she responded Ross Weiss, leaving poor Leon stunned. Upon seeing that the girl's mother was Rossways, Leon quickly realized that he was her father, something the girl confirmed with a joyful smile. Leon panicked as he couldn't believe that she was his and Rossways's daughter. Muin turned around and saw her mother, leaving Leon terrified. Muin ran towards her mother and explained that dad was awake. Upon hearing this, she couldn't help but start smiling. Muin thought that her mother must be happy to see father awake since she came to visit him every day. In response, Rossways began to show a wicked smile. She began to stroke Muin's head and asked her to go outside to play first since she had something to tell to her father. Leon asked her if Muin was really their daughter, to which she replied yes, explaining that she was their biological daughter. She closed the door using her tail and Leon asked her why she had given birth to the child and why she had saved him. The Dragon Queen revealed that he had been sleeping for two years. She couldn't simply let go of what he had done to her two years ago. Leon became enraged since he hadn't wanted to do that. They were different and couldn't coexist. If it had been at any other time, he would have never touched her. Seeing that touching her was torture for him, she wrapped her tail around his leg and pulled him onto the bed. She began to climb on top of him and tore off his shirt. Then she activated a spell since she wanted to carve her own dragon pattern into him. Even though Leon tried to ask her not to do it, she touched his chest causing a magic circle to appear. This pattern was going to become his shame, meaning that from now on, he would be her prisoner and would never be able to leave her. When Leon's companions saw the dragon tattoo on his body, they were going to think that he was a traitor who had surrendered to the dragon clan. Leon didn't understand why she was doing this up to this point. The thing was that the concept of revenge from the dragon race had always been a difficult problem for human scientists specialized in dragons. Their revenge was an inhuman behavior that combined paranoia, extreme, and beyond human comprehension. The dragon queen wanted him to live in this shame for the rest of his life, and to be humiliated by her for the rest of his life. Leon little by little began to feel horny, for the silver dragon queen Rossways, it had been a great honor to make Leon, the greatest dragon slayer in human history, become a slave of the dragon clan and the closest partner of the silver dragon queen in some way. Now that Leon was horny, she got on top of him and decided it was time to clap. They were at the silver dragon castle, and even the maids realized that the dragon queen was in a good mood because her husband had awakened. Leon, who was listening to this conversation hidden from a corner, quickly realized that the Dragon Queen had announced to the public that he was her husband. In reality, no one had any idea how terrifying she was. She had been squeezing him for an entire day and night. Poor Leon's waist was almost broken. He was furious and swore not to stay here to become her toy. Stealthily, Leon left his room and reached the side door of the castle, where there were four dragon guards watching and it was impossible to get out of here. Compared to two years ago, there were very few guards in the castle, it was all so quiet and strange. While Leon was trying to figure out a way to avoid the guards, by pure coincidence he found a hidden hole in the grass. Silently he approached the hole and began to see the light from outside, but he did not know if it was a trap. He decided not to think about this now, since he had to leave here at all costs. Even if it was a trap, he was going to force his way through. Leon started to crawl through the hole. He said goodbye to the perverted dragon mother, and as for the little dragon Muin, although she was very cute, she could only be hers for the moment. The little Muin went out to the balcony and told her mother that father was digging a hole for the dog. The dragon queen, who was wearing a bikini and enjoying a glass of wine, thought he was quite impressive. Muin got excited and started asking her mother when she was going to go and fish him back. But the dragon queen scolded little Muin a bit, saying that using this word was very rude. The little Muin was somewhat confused and asked what she should use then, to which the dragon queen replied that catch him back. After a while, it started to get dark and Leon escaped from the castle and entered a nearby forest.
By climbing these mountains he would be able to see the borders of human territory. He had been running for a few hours so he was sure that the Dragon Queen would not be able to catch up with him. But to his surprise, the Dragon Queen who was now transformed into a dragon appeared in the sky praising Leon for being a great runner. Upon seeing her, Leon began to flee, cursing his bad luck, but the Dragon Queen quickened her pace and landed in front of him. Instead of being furious, she was very satisfied since she had been the one who helped him divert the guards and she was the one who had left a hole for him to escape. Although Leon knew that it was a trap, he had no other option and he also did not expect her to be able to reach him so quickly. If Leon returned to human territory now that he had the mark of the Dragon Queen on his chest, no one would recognize him as a Dragon Slayer. But he did not care about this and he was determined to start over as an ordinary person since it was better than being tortured by her. The Dragon Queen spread her wings and became enraged upon seeing that he did not appreciate her kindness. Using her claw, she grabbed Leon and both began to fly towards the human territory. Three hours later, night fell and the Dragon Queen released Leon near the border city of the Empire, causing him to start falling towards the ground. Leon began to crash against the trees until he finally fell headfirst onto the ground. Although at first he started to have a headache due to the fall, it then disappeared when he saw that he was near a human village. The Dragon Queen transformed into a human and confirmed that indeed it was the human empire. When a person saw the long-lost human city, they felt that they could return to the human world just by stepping over it. But Leon could not go back, even if it seemed to be within reach. At that moment, the mark that Leon had on his chest began to shine. The Dragon Queen had forgotten to mention that when one of the two people with the Dragon Mark wanted to clap with the other, the Dragon Mark would produce a relationship. The Dragon Queen began to touch Leon's chest, now he felt hot, eager to start and unable to resist the impulse. She had brought him here so that he would understand what shame was in front of his hometown. Leon was not determined to lose hope because of this. He took the arm of the Dragon Queen and decided to wait patiently until this opportunity came. By then, he was going to repay her double for all the humiliations she had made him suffer, leaving her in shock. With a smile she accepted, approached him and decided to wait for him, dead or alive. The moon came out and they went to a tree that was near the border city of the Empire, and they were clapping for several hours and now the Dragon Queen was more than satisfied. While on the other side, poor Leon was crying and was exhausted. She started to touch his chest and decided to bring him here every month to visit his hometown and clap for a while. She was a dragon who had her head in the clouds. She was thinking about how to drain poor Leon. The dragon queen decided it was time to leave since their daughter was waiting at home. But Leon asked her to wait. He refused to go with her as a dragon slayer. He did not want to be captured by her as prey and preferred to walk on his own. She explained that from here to the silver dragon castle it would take at least three hours flying at her speed and it would take a human at least 10 days or half a month to walk. But still our MC decided to go on his own, asking her not to underestimate human endurance. The Dragon Queen started smiling, waiting to see how long he could hold out. After a while, Leon was tired. The Dragon Queen who was behind him was waiting for him to say he was tired so she could carry him flying. But he refused to admit that he was tired. She mocked him, saying that the only tough thing about him was his mouth. At that moment, they saw several knights who belonged to the Dragon Slayer army lurking in the area. Leon became happy since these guys could help him get rid of the Dragon Queen. She noticed this and began to exude a murderous aura. If he asked for help, she would kill him without hesitation. One of the knights noticed their presence and asked both of them if they were lost. But Leon lied, saying that they were just hanging out. Deep down he didn't want to involve innocence. He got off the horse and he was the captain of the 47th squadron of the Imperial Army of Dragon Slayers. This jungle was not a good place to hang out since there were many dangerous species and wild animals. He offered to help them take a walk. Leon panicked and started shaking his hands, thanking the captain for his kindness, adding that they have learned some self-defense techniques and could protect themselves. In reality, he did not want him to get closer. The captain noticed that Leon's face was very familiar, causing the Dragon Queen to go on alert. She started to use her power and prepared to finish off the captain. Upon realizing this, Leon quickly noticed that this was not good. He covered her hand, pulled her close to his chest and told the captain that he had mistaken him for someone else. He had such a popular face that even his wife, the Dragon Queen, often recognized him as bad. He began to whisper, asking her to help him get rid of the knights, promising that in return he would obediently come back with her. Fortunately, the Dragon Queen obeyed and both began to show their deep love to the captain. Leon's tactic worked and the captain decided to leave and no longer disturb their love. 
They left and several seconds passed and Leon did not stop hugging the Dragon Queen, making her angry. Upon realizing this, he quickly stepped back. According to her, Leon had been smart not to ask for help, but she made one thing very clear. He had to define his own position. Even though they had children, it did not mean that she was his wife, to which he responded that he had never thought about being her husband. She decided it was time to leave since there was a long way to go. At that moment, Leon began to feel a strong pain in his hand and not long after, he fell fainted to the ground. Noticing this, the Dragon Queen thought he was a fragile human being. She transformed into a dragon, picked up Leon with her mouth, threw him onto her back, and she started flying towards the Silver Dragon Castle, taking this as a plea for mercy. The next day at the Silver Dragon Castle dawned and Leon began to wake up, and the first thing he saw was little Muin next to his bed. He started to wonder how he had come back here, and she explained to him that her mom had been the one who brought dad back. Leon did not take long to realize that she had finally caught him like prey. He noticed that he had his hand bandaged and even had a nice bow. Little Muin took his hand and explained to him that she was the one who had bandaged his hand. In reality she wanted Leon to praise her. He started to stroke her head. The dragonologists had once said that dragons were a fierce race, who spent their whole lives in violence and blood from childhood. Although Muin had obvious dragon characteristics, she did not have hostility towards Leon and was treating him completely like her father. He did not know if this was because she was a human-dragon hybrid. He started to lovingly stroke her head, saying that she was awesome. He praised her saying that Muin was very cute, but also asked her that when she grew up, she should not be like her mother. The Dragon Queen who was listening to the whole conversation from the door asked what was wrong with being just like her. Upon realizing this, the poor Leon got scared to death, then he started to disguise it to change the subject of conversation. Muin began to show the bandaged hand to the Dragon Queen and explained that she had bandaged Daddy's wound according to her instructions. The Dragon Queen maintained a cold attitude and instead of praising her said that this was what she should do, to which Muin responded with an understood. The reality was that she was a very strict mother. Leon began to pet little Muin's head and asked her to go hide in the garden first since he was going to come out looking for her when he finished counting to 100. Muin couldn't help but get very excited when she saw that he wanted to play hide and seek with her. Leon explained that he was not like her mother, and then he started to count and Muin went to the garden to hide. Once she left the room, Leon called the attention of the Dragon Queen and asked her why she was being so hard on Muin. She sat on the bed and explained that all of them, dragons, went through this, just being strict with their children from a young age. They could cultivate strong warriors. Leon started to argue with her mentioning that Muin was not completely a dragon and besides she was very cute. But according to the dragon queen Muin was indeed a dragon and cute was a derogatory word for a dragon. For Leon the dragon queen was also very cute. She got furious and grabbed him by the shirt. He was just a slave that she had to vent her anger on who was not allowed to get ahead of her. Leon understood this, and she became happy. She was the Dragon Queen of the Silver Dragon Clan. She had many governmental matters to attend to, so she entrusted him with the task of taking care of the girl. She approached him and whispered in his ear that Muin liked him. Leon went out to the fountain. The Dragon Queen was very busy and he, a dragon slayer, did not want to be responsible for taking care of the children. He realized that Muin was hiding behind the pillar. She continued to be too naive who believed that he could not find her if she hid behind him. He started pointing at her saying that he had found her, but she did not react, and he began to question whether she was angry. Leon started to apologize to her for having kept her waiting, but at that moment, she began to flee from him. He started running after her asking why she was running. Muin turned a corner, causing Leon to lose sight of her. For him it was very difficult to predict the mood of a child. He no longer had any doubt about why the Dragon Queen had given him the task of taking care of the baby. While he was distracted, little Muin appeared behind him and gave him a hug, leaving him somewhat surprised. He was somewhat confused since he remembered that she had just run past him, but Muin denied this and explained that her dad had not been able to find Muin, so she had gone out to look for dad. Although Leon was somewhat confused, he thought that he had seen wrong. Muin took Leon by the hand and both ran out. She had something to show him. At that moment, a girl just like Muin appeared behind her and started watching them in silence. This is the end of the video. If you guys want to see the next part, then don't forget to subscribe and like the video.